The Adidas Takumi Sen 9, maybe the most niche running shoe you could possibly buy. I'm a Nike guy, kind of always have been, and if you follow this channel for any length of time, you'll see me talking about Nike running pretty extensively. But I obviously like talking about running shoes, and I follow the running shoe industry as a whole, and once in a while, something comes along that I just can't say no to. Case in point. And before we get into this shoe, can we just take a moment and appreciate the German brutalist industrial design of this thing? It is. It is brilliant, it's beautiful. So aesthetics aside, let's talk about it. The Takumi Sen has always been a bit of an enigma to me as an American. It was a shoe that never saw widespread global distribution by Adidas, so it was hard to come by in the States. You had to live near a specialty running store that had an employee that liked this series and maybe they stocked it, or you had to get super lucky and see it pop up in adidas.com but even then, it was weird colors and odd sizes and just nothing you could ever depend on. So, while I never saw the Takumi Sens in person, I always thought of them as a more hardcore and stripped down version of Adidas's Adios line, but for the Japanese market. And why the Japanese market? Well, prior to East Africans, mainly Kenyans and Ethiopians, dominating global marathon running, the Japanese were pretty dominant. In fact, outside of East Africans, the Japanese are probably the most written about and studied long distance runners out there. In fact, there's a great book on this subject. In this book, the author spent a lot of time living in Japan and training with Japanese. And he talks a lot about the cultural significance of running in Japan, how Japanese professional running works, and just how they approach the sport in general. Also, the author wrote a great book about running with Kenyans and living with Kenyans and how they train. So together, both these books kind of give you a really good picture of both these groups. So Japanese racing flats were always very coveted and the Takumi Sen was maybe one of the best. So in 2021, when Adidas redesigned the Takumi Sen series with the eight, I was intrigued. Late last year, when the Takumi Sen nine came out, I finally bought a pair. So what do we actually have here with this shoe? For the sake of this conversation, the Takumi Sen 8 and 9 are fundamentally the same shoe. Same outsole, same midsole, and the only real difference is in the upper. Adidas redesigned the Takumi Sen 9 upper to be within the visual language of their 2023 line, but otherwise there aren't any fundamental differences. The shoe runs the same. So we have 33 mil of Light Strike Pro in the heel, 27 mil in the forefoot, gives you a 6 mil drop. The shoe is very lightweight, 6.4 ounces or 181 grams. It definitely is a very lightweight race shoe. Now, looking at the upper, a couple things to take note is that it is very narrow in the forefoot, but it has a lot of volume in the toe area, which is a strange fit, but you don't get any insane wrinkling or anything in this area because of the stiffness of the material they use in the upper. For the heel, it's a very minimal heel counter, but um, I've never had any sort of heel slippage or uh, issues back there. In fact, it is, a, it is very much a race upper and it fits like a glove. It fits very tightly. A couple things to take note of with the tongue though is that this may be one of the thinnest and most flimsy tongues I've ever seen in a shoe. It takes the tongue in the Nike Vaporfly and makes it worse. It takes a lot of effort to get your foot locked into the shoe because you're always moving the tongue around. But once you get it in there, it works really well. The last thing that sort of makes the fit a little challenging sometimes are the laces. These are maybe the worst laces I have ever seen on a racing shoe. They are stiff, they are thin, and they just dig into your foot. Very not pleasant. But again, for a race fit shoe, I don't expect a lot of comfort and honestly, I'm kind of fine with everything that's going on with the upper. Moving to the outsole, 
I actually find this outsole quite good. We have continental rubber here only in the forefoot and only on the uh, toe off side of the forefoot. The rest of the material is not continental rubber and I honestly have some durability concerns. However, as you can see, this shoe has about 45 miles of, of use on it and the rubber is holding up and the Lightstrike Pro is actually holding up really well. There's a little discoloration, but nothing extreme. So durability wise, I have concerns about these patches of rubber, but overall, I think this shoe should hold up pretty well. So what is it like to run in the Takumi Sun? Well, all the reviewers that have talked about this shoe, they were not wrong. It is fast and it's fun to run in. It is a great interval shoe. It is great for tempo workouts and obviously it's a great race day option. The thing that is always present when you're running in this is it feels every ounce of super shoe. You don't forget that you're running in a ton of tech. The midsole has a rocker to it, but again, it's not extreme. It's not like the Adios Pro 3 or even a Vaporfly. You don't get that kind of falling off a cliff feeling at all. We do have car, we do have rods in the midsole. Unlike the Audios Pro 3, they're not carbon. So they're not as present or as stiff as what you get in the Audios Pro 3 or even a carbon fiber plate like you would get in a Vaporfly. But they do give you more pop and propulsion than a midfoot shank, like what you would find in a Nike Street Fly or traditionally what's on the Takumi Sen. Now, this shoe is definitely for four foot strikers. The combination of the rocker and the uh, composite rods in there really creates a sweet spot in the forefoot, really in this area, to an extreme way. I don't think I've ever run in a shoe that has such a sweet spot in the forefoot. When you hit it right, it's amazing. You're rolling from strike to strike and it feels incredible. The problem is if you don't hit that forefoot area and you're hitting more in the midfoot or even in a heel, the shoe is harsh and very unpleasant to run in. In fact, I've never used a shoe that works well for workouts, but I don't want to do the warm up and cool down in. This shoe does not feel very nice when you're going slow. It just wants to go fast. So if you were someone who had problems with the vapor flies because they were too narrow in the midfoot or the heel. This shoe is just as bad or maybe even worse. Um, and then the Light Strike Pro stiffness doesn't help the situation whatsoever. So this shoe is really optimal for more efficient four foot strike runners. And that's the problem here. And I don't think it's a problem with the Takumi Sen per se. I think it's a larger problem with Adidas's overall running line at the moment. There's a reason why Nike Zoom X Foam is considered the gold standard, not just for performance racing, but also for versatility. I think Nike over the past couple of years has shown that Zoom X can be formulated to work well for performance running but also well for training and easy running, like in the Nike Invincible. And Lightstrike Pro just does not have that range. So I think Adidas' solution to fix this problem and give their running shoe range more versatility was to create the Takumi Sun. When you get a large stack of Lightstrike Pro foam, like in the Adios Pro 3, when you get 40 mils of Light Strike Pro with carbon rods, you feel every millimeter of that stack. It is thick and it feels you know, top heavy and tipsy a little bit. It's not that Nike Zoom X Foam is super stable, but the way that it cushions your foot, the way your foot kind of sinks into it when you run, it makes the higher stack or a comparable stack of foam to Light Strike Pro feel less extreme. The, the instability of Zoom X is because it is so, uh, your foot sinks into it so much. But with Light Strike Pro, it's just the, the harshness and the firmness of the foam. It just feels like you're running on a platform. So in the Audios Pro 3, that actually kind of works out well for its intended purpose of running a half or a full marathon. When you're running a longer distance, 
that's straighter and you're putting more force into the ground, that's where Light Strike Pro really works well. And that extra stack of it gives you that extra cushion for those longer miles. But the problem is when you're running a shorter race, like a 5K or a training run or running on off cambered roads, it just is not very stable and it's not very pleasant to run in. It doesn't, the Audios Pro 3 just doesn't have the range or the versatility that a Nike Vaporfly would. And, I, and again, I think that's where Adidas is coming from with the redesign of the Takumi Sen. They're making it truly a companion shoe to the Audios Pro 3 to extend its versatility. Now, what's weird to me is why did they pick the Takumi Sen? Because they already have the Audios series, but the audio series to Adidas is kind of like the Pegasus series to Nike. They can't really fundamentally change it drastically from, you know, what it is without causing a huge outrage. The RC line in, the, in Adidas, while there is sort of a racing flat and racing heritage there, the RC line seems to have been completely sidestepped now by the SL line as sort of a everyday shoe, uh, a trainer shoe. The Boston line, was never really a race shoe. It was a training shoe that you could race in, but it was never meant to be a dedicated race shoe. So I think Adidas saw the Takumi Sen line as a real valid race option because the Takumi Sen line does have a massive racing pedigree. It has won some of the biggest marathons in the world on the feet of elite athletes. So. I think Adidas focused on redesigning the Takumi Sen to, again, complement the Adios Pro 3 to give it the range that the Adios Pro 3 just doesn't have on its own with an emphasis on racing heritage because I think they really want to make those shoes truly dedicated racing heritage shoes. And I think overall it works. The two shoes work really nicely together. And then you get the Prime X in there as a sort of, I would call it a hyper shoe almost, um, is either another race option or a training option. I think if you have a range of those shoes, it works really well. So the Takumi Sen is a no brainer to me if you are an Adidas runner. If you run head to toe in Adidas shoes and you're, you're training in SLs or Bostons, you're racing in Adios Pros or Prime Xs, the Takumi Sen fits right in there and it gives you a shorter option for shorter races, but also training runs uh, that maybe you don't want to use the Audios Pro 3 or the Prime X on. It is a perfect sort of gap that they had in their line that they're filling with the Takumi Sen. The problem though is that if you're not an Adidas runner and you run in a range of different shoes, the Takumi Sen really is a tough sell because the Vaporfly from Nike is always going to be more versatile. And honestly, as fast as the Takumi Sen is, the Vaporfly is faster, at least for me. So you're getting in one shoe with the Vaporfly a large range from one mile, you know, up to a marathon, even beyond. Whereas with the Adidas line, you need the Takumi Sen and the Adios Pro paired together to complement that. If you're just looking at sort of an updated racing flat and a, a dedicated sort of shorter race five to 10K shoe, I think New Balance's Super Comp Pacer maybe is the more pure racing flat option. And Nike's Streak Fly is maybe the more, let's say modern option. And it's really gonna come down to your preference what's gonna work. but. That's the point. There's a lot of other shoes now to look at in this sort of tempo trainer, shorter race day category, where it's just a really tough sell for the Takumi Sen because it only really works nicely at high speeds. It doesn't really do anything else. So if you're doing easy running or any kind of slower training, it's just not gonna be the best option for you. Thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you found this content useful. Like always, like and subscribe. It helps a new channel significantly. And also in the comments, tell me, did you used to run in the Takumi Sens, the older Takumi Sens, and what did you think about them? I've, I've honestly only ever read great things about them, particularly for people who really love them. 
So if you did run in the older Takumi Sense, what, what do you think of the new redesign? What do you think of the sort of super shoe rethink of the Takumi Sen? And if you own the Takumi Sen, what do you think about it? Do you race in it? Do you train in it? What do you use it for? I'm, I'm, I'm generally curious.